Sports back again with another screencast of the rugby version 3. A little bit of an update, uh, a little bit of a playthrough. We're going to try and cover it all here today. So uh, the games are currently being produced. Uh, looking at about another 35, 40 days as a break in between for Chinese New Year. The factory shut down. The workers go home. Good on them. They deserve a rest. And once they get back, they will be engraving all of these dice to bring us rugby version 3. Now, if you saw the very first screencast designer diary for Pocket Sports, you would have heard me waffling on about rugby version 3 and where I was at with the design stage and... I've pretty much finalized it now. So let's just have a quick look through here. So the game contains four team cards. We've got uh, New Zealand, South Africa, Australia, and England. And we've gone back to the landscape style here. Each particular team has certain attacking skills uh, for this matchup today. Australia, all of these skills under this attack and in England down here, excuse me, under their attack, these are ever present. Whenever they roll this particular attacking move, they will get that modifier there. Uh, let's just lock that down so that doesn't keep popping up. Draw and pass for England. They're very good at doing conversion kicks. They get an extra 10 meters for range and distance, the new kicking mechanic. And they can pack the rolling mole off a scrum win. Australia can pack the rolling mole off a line out. The penalty goal plus five meter distance, chip and chase plus one. Goose step plus two, ever present attacking and useful uh, for picking up those modifiers. Uh, more chances to get into the try zone. Uh, scoring zone, I should say. Now the defense is a skill check. And if you know anything about tabletop games, sometimes to activate a special skill, you will need to roll a required number uh, to make that happen. So the ninth die gets a workout in rugby version three, uh, because down here we can see it's got skill check here, skill check, skill check. And we're looking at that number above. It's a skill check of two, skill check of four, etc., etc., And... Uh, what happens here, this defense, if I want to run a decoy runner to activate him so the defense gets all confused, they follow the wrong man, I need to roll a four, but I can only do that when running the short side play with Australia. Likewise down here, England can only run their decoy when doing the wraparound play. Australia and England can both intercept only on particular plays and they need to roll a five uh, to do that in game possession. Australia can turn the scrum uh, England can leave the mall and England can strip on a fend or a pick and drive if they can roll a six and so to Australia can regather possession of a chip and chase or a grubber kick if they can roll a six. Anyway, sounds confusing, but we're going to run through a few rolls here today and I am talking quickly because as I said, I've recorded this video a handful of times today and I want this one to be the final one. Up here, scoreboard. Four cards included on the flip side of every team card will be the scoreboard. Why? Because when you're using two cards over here, flip one of these bad boys over, you've got a scoreboard. Easy. User space. Uh, let's have a look closer here. So in Pocket Sports Rugby, it will be half time once a team, any team, reaches 20 points and then full time when the team reaches 40 points and thus being declared the winner. However, there are weather conditions as well in the new version. And if it's raining, then it's going to be a short matched. Half time will be at 10 points and full time and the winner will be declared at 20 points. This 30 points here while we're talking weather, Let's go down and have a bit of a look. Again, the purple die features a lot in the new game. And these weather options, they're optional play. So get together with your mate. Hey, want to play the uh, weather option? Yeah, why not? Let's roll it and see what we get. If it's fine, then there's no effect on either team. Sunny day, happy days, great for rugby. If it's cold weather, then Australia and South Africa don't play as well in the cold weather. So, if they are playing against England or New Zealand, as in today, it's Australia versus England. If England reaches 30 points, if England reaches 30 points, then Australia then has an anchor mechanic. So it suffers minus one to all its uh, attacking moves forward 
after England reaches 30 points. Why? Because Australia doesn't handle the cold weather or South Africa and England does. They thrive in it. They love it over there. And once they reach 30 points, they can skip away, hopefully, because Australia is just getting harder and harder to score those points. Likewise, hot weather, New Zealand, England, they don't like the balmy weather. Uh, if Australia or South Africa reach 30 points before they do, then... Um, or, or if they do, then they suffer that anchor mechanic of minus one. It'll make sense. It'll make sense. Believe me. Rainy weather, as I said before, everyone suffers minus one. Why? Because the ball's slippery. People are slipping over. You can't get your footing in the scrum, etc. So there's no uh, minus one uh, for your attacks and no kicking bonus. That plus ten for conversions for England straight out the window doesn't count anymore. But it's a short match, so half-time at 10 and full-time at 20 points with the winner, as I said before. Right, let's get straight in it, into it today. Let me jump over here and pull up the random org. Um, there we go. Let's, okay, let's connect to the internet. That's poor, poor video editing there. What are you doing? What are you doing, son? We'll cut that out. We'll cut that out. All right, let's put that in. All right, so we've got that ready to go. Now, as with rugby and all or most pocket sports games, the red die is the return die. It's the looping die. It's the action die. It starts the play. Uh, when possession changes changes hands, it uh, restarts play after scores uh, are on the board. It tries a score, it kicks a score, etc. So we start with the scrum half. And today I'm feeling generous, so I'm going to let England receive the ball uh, off the kickoff. Wallabies kickoff, bang, down. England receives, scrum half, off we go. Let's roll, baby. Roll. So the scrum half rolls a six. And just for this tutorial, we're looking straight down the dies. One, two, three, four, five, and six over here. So uh, it was a six roll. So England have done a little sneaky box kick. The intensity value is only three. So now we can discuss why there are two defensive dies. Previously in rugby, there was only this one brown die and it had values from one to five and one face was the penalty. However, that's changed now. The brown die is, I guess, your less riskier defensive action. Still the same totals, one to five. Uh, there are two twos, but there's no chance of giving away a penalty. However, the purple die down here, yes, they're bigger hits. Bigger hits, but you may give away that penalty. And because of the kicking, mechanic has changed. You don't want to be giving away uh, too many penalties. So in this case, it's a low intensity of three. Uh, I feel I can easily achieve that with two rolls of the brown die. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. With the first roll being a two, which is a three. Easy done. All I needed was one tackler in there to put this uh, the scrum half into the ground and teach him what, what. So then they roll again, England. Off they go. He passes out to the wing. Okay, the wing rolls for England. And that's a three, and again, an inside run. It's a low intensity, so no need for me to try and uh, do anything too big here and give away a penalty. Again, we will roll the brown die because... I should be able to get a three quite easily. A six. Bang! It's a big hit. Wooshka. Now, if I roll a big hit on either the brown or purple, I, on my first roll, can't be the second, has to be the first roll, and if this value, five or six, is higher than the intensity value, then I can try to steal the ball with a ruck win. It says right here, big hit five, ruck five. Uh, uh, bigger than three, so I can attempt to uh, win the ball in the ruck by coming down here and rolling the black die. You can see there are two faces here. It says ruck win and ruck win. If either of those appear, then I steal possession for the Wallabies. Off we go. It's a three, and lucky me, it is a ruck win. Oh, nice pocock action in there. So Australia takes possession with the scrum half, and we continue play. It's a two, and it's pass out to the wing. Australia now getting it out there. Adam Ashley Cooper, what's he doing out there? Oh, and he chips a little grubber kick, a little grubber kick. We don't have anything on the grubber kick here. 
Uh, can England do anything against a grubber kick? No, they can't. So it's a value of four. England, likewise, will think, hey, we can stop that with the brown. So we're going to roll uh, five, which is a four. Okay, straight away. They've put me into the turf, and we go back to the scrum half, Australia. Now, we'll roll three, and again, the short side play, short side play, and Australia here. Look, the defence. Now, if I can activate my skill check on the short side, this means I will send a decoy runner. And England, if I'm successful rolling a four, five, or six here, England will chase this decoy runner, minusing or reducing the number of their defensive rolls from two to one only because someone's chased the wrong man. So off we go. Australia now. We're on the short side. We can attempt the decoy run and we need to roll a four, five or six with the skill check down here. Let's see how we go. And we roll the three. So not good enough. In this case, it's just a regular old short side run of four. And again, England will throw their defense. Let's just bring in this purple die. Let's say they're feeling a bit frisky. Uh, so they want to roll that purple die. They roll a two. They still need to roll again. So let's just push that with the purple die and see if we can't get them to make a penalty, which they don't. They push me into the turf again. The scrum halves are getting a workout. Australia in possession again. Uh, pass to the centre. The yellow. Off we go. It's a five. So Australia's thrown the dummy. We've thrown the dummy. Uh, it's a five. Value of five again. We'll put England down here. We'll try and get them to force a penalty just for uh, example's sake here. So four. Uh, the dummy was a value of five, so they need to roll again. They roll again and roll a three. Okay, all right. So uh, let's just mix up some scenarios here so we get a good taste of uh, what we're doing. So let's just pretend from the scrum half here, Australia passes uh, to the back and the result is this, a pass or a drop goal. Okay, the pass or a drop goal. Now... The back line here has an option. A pass left or right means I can choose to either select the wing or the center or the forward and pass it directly to them and roll that corresponding die or I can choose uh, to attempt a drop goal. Now before doing that, I need to check the field position. How do we do that? Good question. Let's come down here. We can see on the defensive die on the brown, it says range. And this is how far I am from the uh, the sticks from the goalpost, how far I would need to kick uh, uh, down here using the black die with my kick distance uh, to achieve the drop goal. So in order for me to do this, I've got the option here. I'm in attack, drop goal. I'd have to ask kindly, England, uh, would you mind rolling uh, for range? They would say, no problems. Let's do that for you and they roll a one. So I know the range is 40 meters. Now, uh, penalty goal on our Australia has a five meter addition to their kick. So let's just have a look at the uh, the maths down here. So I need 40 meters to kick, uh, but I've got five meters. So that really is 35 meter target. Looking down here on the kick, uh, 35 meter, that scores the points. 40 meters scores the points, 45 but 20, 25, 30, any of these three. So it's a 50-50. So for this example today, I'm going to say Australia, feeling frisky. We're going to do a big, big hooping drop goal uh, from f from uh, 40 metres out, but I get that five metre extra bonus because Australia kicks the penalty as well. And we roll. It's a four and it's 45 metres. It's gone sailing over the bar and is three points for Australia. Okay, so the range works for drop goals. Um, if I had have thought that was too far, if it was a range of 50, that's definitely out of range, it's impossible, then I could have just elected to pass as per, per normal. So whether it's a drop goal or a penalty goal or a conversion, you always need to ask your opponent to roll to check the range and then you'll be kicking appropriately, either deciding to do the penalty goal or the drop goal. Conversion, you've got no choice, you just have to kick, but the other two you can 
check the range and then decide whether to go for it or to continue play. Got it? Good. Let's move on. The scrum here. Okay, let's do another example. Let's say Australia has uh, thrown it to the center and has been a knock on and a scrum is awarded. Uh, England will have the feed and we come down here to the white die. So England will then be rolling the ref die and hopefully getting one of these green lights for the scrum. That means they win the ball from the scrum. If they get the red, then I win the ball. Australia wins the, the ball. But let's just uh, see this here. Let's just pretend England are rolling uh, for the scrum. They roll the five. Yes, green light scrum. So at the moment, they've won the scrum. Now. England over here, they're attacking their skills over here, they're attacking bonuses. Off, they can start a rolling mole off a scrum win. Well, they've just done that, they've won the scrum. Now, what does this mean? Now, if they can roll another two green light scrums directly after the first one has been done, so they need to roll another one and another two, that means the scrum has just pushed, pushed, and pushed over into the try scoring area. Okay, so sounds easy enough. Well, let's wait and see. They would have to say, right, I'm rolling mall, I'm starting the rolling mall to try and roll two more scrums. Okay, so Australia up here, they've got a skill check that they can activate and that's turning the scrum. If they can roll a five, then they will also win the penalty. So this is a good diffuser of the English strong rolling mole. But let's just see how they go. Okay, if they roll a penalty one, that ends the rolling mole. Then they need to choose whether to have a quick tap or to go for the kick, check the range, etc. As I just said, if they reset the scrum, then that ends the rolling mole as well. So they've won one scrum, let's roll again. Okay, six, they've won a second. So it's at this point that Australia would say, I don't want them to roll one more. So I'm going to try now and turn the scrum. So I'd interrupt uh, my opponent and say, hey, 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 I'm going to try and turn the scrum here. I'm going to try and do a skill check of five. So now I'll be rolling, Australia will be rolling to try and get that skill check of five. They roll the two but it's not good enough it's a skill check of three so then england would continue push push pushing and let's see the result here they roll a two okay so unfortunately for england they didn't get the three successful green lights to push directly over the try line but it's a penalty one now penalty one they can either say all right well, I'm going to take this as an advantage and continue play for my scrum and I'll get plus one until Australia puts me down three times. Or I can choose to ask for range to look at a penalty goal. So you probably go this first. Okay, let me check out the range. Australia would then roll. Okay, let's see the range. Let's hope it's far. And the range is only 20 metres. All right, now he can either choose. Well, that's an easy three points. Or... Go the plane, try and get the one. So let's just pretend 